Good morning, everybody. Pastor John here uh, from New Life Church in Owaco, Washington, and I am glad that you've joined us today. This is the message for Sunday, August 8th, 2021, and I am thankful uh, to have you with us today. Now, if you have been with us for any length of time, you might remember last year uh, I actually brought you a, a series live from the garden. Who remembers me uh, sermonating from the garden? And it was actually my garden that we were in, uh, uh, the garden that we were working in the greenhouse and, uh, and then a little bit out at the Cranberry Bogs. Uh, you might remember us recording those sermons and putting them on Facebook for you last year. Uh, and so you, you may very well be aware that uh, I am continuing to try my hand at gardening. It's something that uh, my friend Missy and I I have been doing the last couple of years. Uh, our friend Dan, uh, he provided us with some land uh, to uh, plant a small garden. And in exchange, all he asked for uh, were a few potatoes, that we try and grow some potatoes for him, which is funny because he has consistently declined them every single time we have tried to uh, offer them to him. Because potatoes are one of the things we grow well. But I want to be clear, this isn't just a John and Missy venture. Uh, we have another friend named Jerry uh, who has loaned us his tiller each spring so that we could get the crops in the ground. And then uh, Missy's boys and my girls, uh, they all help with the garden too. Uh, especially with weeding, something that we have to do fairly often. And I think though that Sandria, um, she mostly helps because she wants to eat the sweet peas off the vine while nobody can stop her uh, when she's harvesting them. I think that's why she helps in the garden. <clears throat> but this has been a season of learning and exploration for me. We talk about learning curves, and this has been one for me. I've gardened in the past, and in fact, I've had pretty good success at it. Uh, when we lived in the South, I grew all kinds of things. Um, but up here, it has been extremely difficult for me to learn what crops do well, and especially as it relates to the soil that we have. Uh, some of the things that, despite our absolute best effort, they haven't done anything. Uh, the peas have done well, uh, the lettuce has done well each time, the potatoes, but our root vegetables have uh, just been awful. Uh, last year we grew carrots. They were very tasty, but they were all about this big. Uh, the uh, onions, soft and mushy, and I do not have high hopes uh, for the beets that we're uh, currently trying to grow this year. Uh, kale has done well. Uh, that's done good in this environment. Uh, I mentioned the sweet peas uh, already, but they are probably our most prolific crop. And uh, the potatoes uh, have done well, but you want to talk about a disaster? <laughs> Last year we tried peppers. We tried to grow some peppers, and I love peppers, but they just did not do anything based on the soil and the weather that we have here. Uh, so we actually uh, went from starts. We, we got some small little plants and put them in, in the ground. They were probably about this tall when we put them in the ground. The problem was that they were also about this tall when we took them out of the ground. They didn't do anything. They didn't grow. They didn't make fruit. They just sat there. Now they got water and they got fertilizer. They got absolutely everything that they needed to succeed. And eventually some little flowers finally came out and there were a couple of tiny little peppers. Uh, one of the plants threw all of its fruit. It didn't even bother. We did get a bell pepper that was about as uh, that was about as long and as wide as my thumb. So it was just a bell pepper about that big. Uh, and my favorites uh, are peppers. I, I love peppers. I like to uh, I like to make salsas. I like to make uh, a lot of different cooking with peppers. I like hot peppers. I like mild peppers. I just like peppers. And so I had high hopes that these peppers were going to do well, but. The, uh, the only pepper that, that made for us to be able to eat was a jalapeno pepper. And it started out, when it first came out, it was, it was, when we found it, it was about the size of a dime. And then uh, it got up to about the size of a quarter and just stopped. It stopped growing. And we went all summer uh, until the plants actually went into decline. 
And when they did, we had to we had to pull the plants. They weren't doing anything anymore. They were dying back. And we finally picked this tiny jalapeno pepper, which was about two inches long. And Missy is precious and adorable, and we love her. And she so she says, John, you take the jalapeno pepper since you love peppers so much, and I don't really do peppers. So I took the pepper home with high hopes. And uh, I decided to include it in the upcoming tacos uh, that I was making. And so I cut it up and I tasted it. And it didn't taste like a jalapeno pepper. It didn't taste like anything. It didn't taste like water. It didn't have a pepper flavor. It just had pepper texture. And it didn't, it didn't have a taste. It was really, really gross. And uh, it didn't add any value to what I was making. Uh, it had no spice. It had no flavor. It, it didn't. So I'm putting it in tacos with this expectation of it having some influence on what I'm eating. Like I should be able to taste this pepper flavor. There should be something of value here, and, and there simply wasn't. Uh, there was absolutely nothing good about this pepper that we had grown. Um, like I said, we, we had some success in the garden. This wasn't it. So ultimately, all we ended up doing was pulling up these pepper plants. And I want you to hear me. The only value they had was that we threw them in the burn pile. And then on a, on a nice, clear fall day, we burned those plants and we cooked s'mores over them. That was the only value that those plants uh, produced. And that brings us to what I want us to talk about today. How would it make you feel if you bought plants and you had big plans for these plants? I mean, we're talking salsa and salads and pickles and uh, and just you're gonna eat healthy you're growing it in the garden you're going all organic I mean, you are ready to go you want all this yummy food but instead of getting this this yummy delicious bounty uh, I mean you give it food you give it water you give it absolutely everything it needs for it to grow and be healthy and it does nothing it produces absolutely nothing of value how would you feel I mean you've done everything right you went and got the books you 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 did it all you even measure the pH balance of the soil and still you get literally nothing no yield whatsoever no fruit that's produced how would you feel in Matthew 24 Starting in verse 37, Jesus says, When the Son of Man returns, it'll be like it was in Noah's day. In those days before the flood, uh, the people were enjoying banquets, and parties, and weddings right up to the time Noah entered his boat. People didn't realize what was going to happen until the flood came and swept them all away. That is the way it will be when the Son of Man comes. Two men will be working together in the field, one taken, the other left. Two women will be grinding flour at the mill, one taken, the other left. So you too must keep watch, for you don't know what day your Lord is coming. Understand this, if a homeowner knew exactly when a burglar was coming, he would, not, he would keep watch and not permit his house to be broken into. You also must be ready all the time, for the Son of Man will come when least expected. A faithful Sensible servant is one to whom the master can give responsibility of managing his other household servants and feeding them. If the master returns and finds that the servant has done a good job, there'll be a reward. I tell you the truth, the master will put that servant in charge of all that he owns. But what if the servant is evil and thinks, my master won't be back for a while? And he begins beating the other servants, partying, and getting drunk. The master will return unannounced and unexpected, and he will cut the servant to pieces and assign him a place with the hypocrites. 
In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And there's way too many people in our culture who are quick to criticize. Uh, they say, oh, Jesus is so mean. He's going to cut people into pieces and put them in the place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. Oh, bad Jesus. No. Pay attention. Listen to what it actually says. Verse 45. A faithful, sensible servant is one whom the master can give the responsibility of managing his other household servants and feeding them. You got it? It's not about the punishment for bad behavior. This is about a reward for doing what is right. If the master returns and finds that that servant has done a good job, there will be a reward. Verse 47, I tell you the truth. The master will put that servant in charge of all that he owns. As you're watching this today, I want you to take a step back. And I want you to look at what you have been given. I'm serious. I want you to look at everything that you have been given. Every gift, every talent, every resource, everything that you own. I want you to look critically right now at everything that's at your disposal. What are your skills? If, if somebody were to ask you, what are the top five things that you do well? If you, were to have, if you had to write that down right now, write down the top five things that you do well. Uh, your special ability, something that you can do that nobody else can do. Um, and I'm not really talking about sticking your tongue to your nose, but hey, if you can stick your tongue up your nose, that's good for you. Um, maybe that is still something, though, that you can use for the kingdom of God. What are your talents? What resources do you have in your possession? Now, now that you've put this list together, are you using these things for the kingdom of God? If so, great. Guess what? You qualify as one of these servants who's doing what they're supposed to do. But if you're not, I caution you. You need to think about my pepper plants. I gave them everything I could to get fruit out of them, and they didn't do anything. The only value that they had in the end was burning on a late fall night to make s'mores. Now that is not what they were designed for. It's not what it was ever intended or purposed to do. But that's all that they were good for. Why do you think Jesus gave you all this stuff? Look at all the stuff that you are surrounded with. I'm talking about physical things. Stuff. Look at all this stuff. Why do you have all this stuff? Now look at your talents, your giftings. Are you, do you have musical talent? Maybe you have knowledge of fishing. Maybe you have craft-making abilities. Perhaps it's something less tangible, uh, but it's just as important, leadership skills. Maybe you're good with logistics. Maybe you have the ability to teach. Maybe you know how to uh, work computers or electronics. Maybe you have a love for cooking or baking. We have collectively so many blessings with which we can enhance the kingdom of God. Yet we squander them. We don't use them or we don't use them well. We could be making real fruit for the kingdom of God, but instead we call them hobbies and we keep them to ourselves. Church, it's time to loose your talent. It's time to open the gate and set it free. Put your resources to work. We need to expand the kingdom of God, and we need to do it quickly. This isn't something that you can keep sitting on because you don't know when the master's coming back. We need to be at work feeding the other servants, not beating them and getting drunk. We need to be taking care of things like he intended for us to do. We should be out there winning souls right now. That's why Jesus gave you all of the gifts, blessings, and resources that he did. You should not be wasting it. A faithful, sensible servant is one to whom the master can give the responsibility of managing his other household servants and feeding them. There are so many ways you could be doing that. And the examples include... Everything from feeding the soul, feeding 
someone so that they grow spiritually, so they become spiritually mature, all the way to literally feeding their bodies. Because there are people who need food, and you have gifts of cooking and baking. Please be faithful with what the Lord has given you. And remember in all of this, seek the Holy Spirit and see what He has to say on the issue. We need to do this according to His will, not our will. Just because you have a gift or a talent doesn't mean that you get to use it the way you want to. He might want you to use that gift in a completely different way than what you were expecting. You have a great singing voice, you could go on to be a rock star. Why, think of all the good that you could do with the money. Oh, but what if he wants you to use that same gift to be a worship leader? Because he knows that you also have a gift for worship and an ability to lead others into a place of worship. So be very cautious with how you, you would want to use the gift versus how he would want you to use the gift. Seek the Holy Spirit and get his opinion on the subject before you run out and do anything. Using your gifts and talents should never be about you. Jesus said in Matthew 7, 21, Not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will enter. On Judgment Day, many will say, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name. We cast out demons in your name and perform many miracles in your name. But I'll reply, I never knew you. Get away from me, you who break God's laws. See, it's not just about us being out there saying, Lord, Lord, we prophesied. We did all these things. We did it according to how we thought we should be doing it. That's what you thought. You need to do what he thinks. Seek the Holy Spirit. Know his will. And then put your skills, abilities, resources, talents, money, put all of this to work for the kingdom of God. We have to be faithful with our blessings, but we have to be obedient as well. So do me a favor. This week, seek the Holy Spirit and ask Him how you can use all of the blessings that you have. And then I want you to do something. Whether it's me or whether it's another pastor that you see as your pastor, I want you to call or message your pastor and let them know how the Holy Spirit has told you to use your gifts, talents, and resources this week. I want you to do this before next Sunday. Message your pastor and let him know how you intend to use a particular gift or resource this week to put it into service for the kingdom of God. I want to hear what the Holy Spirit is telling you. And I want you, if you don't attend church at New Life, I want you to tell your pastor what you intend to do with those gifts and talents. I mean, I mean, stop. You don't know when the Son of Man is coming. It's just like the days of Noah. And he's going to come unexpected. And when the Master returns, he wants to find his servants doing what they're supposed to be doing. If you want to hear, well done, good and faithful servant, you have to do well done, good and faithful servant. You have to do well. So get out there and put these resources to work for the kingdom of God. And I want to know what the Holy Spirit's telling you. I want to see how he's going to use you. So please, message me this week and let me know. Let's close in a word of prayer. Father, I thank you for all who are watching today. And I ask, Holy Spirit, that you make clear to them what it is that you need from them this week as it relates to every gift, talent, and resource they have, how they can put that into work for the kingdom of God. And Father, I ask for great fruit. As we are faithful with these little things, I ask that you continue to grow and expand our church bodies, our the kingdom overall, that we are able to do more and more and see many people come to faith in Christ because we have been responsible with what you've given us. Let revival begin in this way, that we are obedient with the things that you have provided to us. I thank you, Lord, for this, and I ask that you continue to bless us. And it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. I want to thank you for joining us today. Sorry if I sounded a little bit mean. No, I'm really not. But I love you, and I want you to go out and do what the Holy Spirit has for you. So get out there and get to work. If you want to hear the well done, you have to do well.